2 Samuel 13. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, his name also means peace. And this guy causes anything but peace. Absalom is a, one of the types of the Antichrist. Now, he's not the son of Jesus, David, you know, type of Jesus Christ. All types don't go all the way, but Absalom Antichrist is almost like Jesus Christ and God that the, the world will be fooled. So Solomon and Absalom, both their names be peace. Anything but for David. Had a fair sister. She looked well, nice. Uh, I think they said Rebecca was really beautiful. And uh, Rachel, fair, whose name was Tamar. And Amon, the son of David, loved her. We'll find out later this is lust, not love. Big difference. And Amon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. Love sick. For she was a virgin. A little extra note. And Amon thought his head it hard for him to do anything to her. Um, he's fantasizing about her. He's having lustful thoughts. And according to Jesus in the book of Matthew, he's committing adultery, fornication. But Amon had a friend. Here we go. This gets worse and worse in this chapter. Whose name was Jonabab. That's okay, that's not bad. The son of Shimei. 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 David's brother. So, cousins. This family of David is messed up. Really, seriously. Joab, Abishai, and I forget the other guy's name. The sons of Zuriah. That's all David's family. Here is his cut here is Amon's cousin, David's brother, into the picture. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. Genesis 3 1. The serpent, Satan. This guy is after Satan. And it's possible here we have the son of Jesse. He's got one good son, David, and he's got one terrible son, Jonadab. In families, you do not have, oh, one great race of Baptist children that do right and love the Bible. A father is able to have a good child and a bad child. And we see both of them here. David, he's a sinner. Jonah, he's a sinner. Jesse, he's a sinner. We're all sin. All of sin. And he said unto him, Amen. Why art thou, being a king's son, Lean from day to day. He's just uh, moping around. Can't have my sister. Uh, this whole thing is ruining his whole life. Amen. don't have much of a life. And what Jonadab is saying, listen, you're the king's son. You can get anything, have anything you want. Why are you sad? Your father is the king. And then I said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. So that is his sister. And with so many wives that David has, I have stepsister. And Jonadab said unto him, here we go, here's some terrible advice. Wicked advice. Lay thee down in thy bed and make thyself sick. There you go. It's in the Bible. Mother comes walking and opens the bedroom door. Aren't you getting ready for, for school? I don't feel good today, Mom. I, I'm, I'm sick. Making fun. Making excuse. Making up a lie. Make, calling out from work. It's in the Bible. And it's not right if you're not sick. Everything's in the Bible. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight, that I may eat and that I may see it and eat it at her hand. 
If you're really sick, would you really want to have a meal? Especially bread. A lot of times I'm sick and, you know, really sick. And, you know, just like I'm going to later on, I'm going to lay down. Just let me be. I don't want to eat. I don't feel well. Uh, I got a note here. And I can't read it. Something. So David is clueless to what's going on. And what we're going to see later on, it is common knowledge. So Amon lay down and made himself sick, pretender, liar. And when the king was come to see him, well, give David that much credit. When his sons are sick, he comes and visits them. Or maybe they're not in the in the kingdom. They're not in the castle. And maybe like, okay, I got to figure out where this guy is. Amos said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come. And make me a couple of cakes in my sight. I'm really sick. Give me some cakes. It'd be like a mother to say, are you really sick today? Yeah. I got some chocolate cupcakes in the cupboard. You want some? Yeah, I have some. You're not sick. I only say that out of experience. That I may eat at her hand. And after that I had to go to school. Then David sent home to Tamar. Saying go now to thy brother Amon's house. And dress him me. So Tamar went to her brother Amon's house. You know, it's a, look, hey. My brother's sick. He wants something. I'll go help him. She has no idea what's going to happen. David has no idea what he's, what he's just done. Now let me, before I go even further, Amon was in bed when he should have been somewhere else. Now let's start looking at the sowing and reaping of David. David was in bed where he should have been somewhere else. When the men of Israel were out in battle, David was upon his bed and he got up in the middle of the night and walked around and saw a woman watching herself. Amon is in bed. He shouldn't be in bed. He should be somewhere else. I hope you now are starting to see David is reaping. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. What happens now and things are going to happen in David's life is because of what he did. Because he stayed at home. Amon and his uh, uncle or cousin, whatever, are playing along. And she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes. So she's in his kitchen, you know, pans and rolling stuff out, and he's able to see her. And we've already told he's having sexual fantasies about her. Now she's in his kitchen when plain view. And she took a pan and poured them out before him. Now, what's the Holy Spirit? Tamar is doing what she was told to do. Make some cakes. So that's exactly what she's doing. You know what Joseph was doing? He was doing his business in the house just exactly like he was supposed to be doing. In that case, here comes Potiphar's wife. Come lie with me. No. Come on, Joseph. Come lie with me. No. And you got to be careful in your everyday business that you do not put yourself available to sins of other people. And like Joseph, Amon's going to set his sister up like Joseph. Out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amon said, have out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. At that point right there, there's no witnesses. Here we are in the story of Joseph. Joseph is alone with Potiphar's wife. Do not put yourself in this situation, male or female. Because even if they lie like Potiphar's wife did, you're in trouble. And woe be to the modern workforce today where they put a man and woman in an office or cubicle together and you don't have no say about it. And that reference is Genesis 39, 11, and I have 34, 7. Genesis 39, 11, 
and 34-7. We have in the workplace today sexual harassment. We have in the workplace all these rules and standards about how you treat your fellow co-worker, which you ought to treat them good. But then we put them in circumstances where they have no defense, there are no witnesses. This woman said, I did something sexually to her. This guy says, I had an ethic joke about it. All right, where's the witnesses? There are no witnesses in my cubicle. You only have the two of us. And now that goes on my record. And most cases stays on that record. Like the police force. There's one police officer and the person sitting in the car you just pulled over. Now today they have microphones, they record the conversations and all that. But you want to have two police officers for protection. So Eamon does not, in the deed that he's going to do, he does not want any witnesses. David had no witnesses. Yeah, he sent the messengers, but I guarantee when the messengers brought Bathsheba, I guarantee he got rid of them. All right, guys, get out of here. Do you see the sins of David being reaped out right now? But it's coming real close to home because it's David's son and, and David's granddaughter. And Amon said, Amon said to Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber. So she's in the kitchen wherever they make the bread. He, she's not in the bedroom. Huh? Who knows? It says Absalom's son of David had a fair sister. Okay. I thought it was Absalom's. So then Absalom and Tamar are of the same mother of, the, of all the wives that David had then. That's even worse. It's sister and brother. Brother and sister. I'm, I mean, not Absalom brothers. Absalom and Ammon are brothers, but they have two different mothers. With two different mothers. With Absalom and Absalom and Tamar are the same mother. Yeah, but not, they don't have the same. Ammon isn't. Yeah. Ammon is totally different mother. Yeah. David has too many wives. <laughs> so she's not in the bedroom with him she's out where the hearth is where the kitchen and he's sexually admiring her and he says come into the chamber come into the bedroom I may eat of thy hand she wants him he wants her to hand feed him And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Ammon, her brother. She has no idea. And when she brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered brightly, Nay, my brother, do not force me. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. It's the law. Leviticus 18.9 Verse 11, Leviticus 18, 9 and 11, and then 20, verse 17. Leviticus 18, 9 and 11, and 20, verse 17. Tamar is implying, Amen, you ought to know the law. This is wrong. Fact is, you want, my, you want me, your sister, that's even wrong. But that's a sin of Abraham, isn't it? Was not Sarah... The, the sister, I mean the daughter of his father, but not the daughter of his mother. So you see Abraham's sin. Now that's a pure race that God set forth, but here it is. It's okay for great, great, great grandpa Abraham. It's good for me. It should be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. It's folly. It's wrong. There's a law now. Abraham did not have a law. And the law said, Amen, you're wrong. Do not do what you're going to do. And I, whether shall I cause my shame to go? You're going to shame me. It's going to be all around that I slept with my brother. And playing the grapevine, the telephone game, and the gossip of the Baptist churches, it will not come out as the truth that Amon Forrester, oh, Tamar slept with her brother without any truth to it. 
And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Today in America, to be boasted and praised and made a law that you can have incest relationships. And they're working that way, by the way. But it would be a fool in Israel, even where Israel's in their sin, that Amon had gone to his sister. That's foolish. It's against the law. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king. He will not withhold me from thee. Now, I don't think David would have done that. But I think he is so got her right now, she's crying out anything to get away from him. Man, come on, talk to our father. Our father will give me to him first. Come on, let's please do this legally. Give me a chance to get out from your grips. That's what she's doing. If he were to say, okay, let's go ask that. She's going to book and run. <laughs> she's trying every plea she can right now to get out from him. How, about, how be it he would not hearken unto her voice. But he being stronger than she, forced her and laid with her. James 1.15 James 1.15 and while we go there, we already done this verse with David. Can I maybe safely assume, maybe by sowing and reaping, that the story of what's going on with Tamar right now, maybe it was Bathsheba? Is there a possibility? I, we don't know. The Bible does not record it. But the reaping of Amon matches David. And could it be the fact is that Bathsheba was actually raped by David? Or is the reaping and sowing that you get more? You put a little tomato seed in the ground, look what you get. You get big, plumpy tomatoes, big boys, beef masters. Yummy. That, that is so much bigger than that little seed that you planted. That... Is it the fact that maybe Amar and Tamar, Amon and Tamar, that's just bigger than what David had done? But it's something to think about when we look at James 1.14. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my bro beloved brethren. And that's the same thing we read with David. He, how be, he would not hearken unto her voice. He's, he's on the road to sin. But being stronger than she, forced her and laid with her. And now it's sin. Deuteronomy 22, 28. Deuteronomy 22, 28. And if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that laid with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver. And she shall be his wife, because he has humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. He does not do that. He's going to hate her worse. So by doing what he wants to do right now, and we'll read on the next verse before we read, then Amon hated her exceedingly so that he hated, so that the hatred wherein he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amon said unto her, Arise, be gone. He did not love her. And according to the law of Deuteronomy 22, that is now your wife. I don't want her now. And the thing is, America needs to learn, and I don't know how other countries, but I know America, is when you get that woman, 
in high school and you finally get to have your way as an animal beast with her. And you may love and love and love, but once you have defiled, you may find out it wasn't love at all, it's lust. Now, Amon raped Tamar. There are teenagers today and young adults throughout this country, there's no rape. They're voluntarily. And they're finding out it wasn't really love. And they move on to the next one. And that wasn't really love. And they just throw love around. And the Bible says God is love. You cannot know what love is until you know God. So Amen is outside God because he doesn't know what love really is. Now he has defiled himself, he has defiled his sister, and he's defiled his house. This news will get around. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. It's almost like she's saying, Deuteronomy 22, we are now together, boy. What you just did to me, Deuteronomy 22, 28, uh, we have a relationship. And I don't care what you say, the Bible says when that flesh joins the flesh, the male body joins the female body together in the marriage bed, you're married. Flesh joining flesh. And she's like right now, okay, the rape has happened. He's sending her out. It's like, oh, that's it? That's all you're going to do? You're not going to take care of me now? I could think of a good few words that she would have. I don't know if they had those words back then. But he would not hearken unto her. I thought he loved her. And many women, you're going to find out that there are many men out there like I am. All they want to do is get you. And once they get you, they won't care. And if you get a baby by it, they won't even care even more. That's the Bible knowledge of chapter 13 of 2 Samuel. There are men who are going to lust after you, but they're not going to love you. Now, David loved Bathsheba. He took care of her. That's the difference between Amon and David. But Bathsheba had no idea, I don't think, what was going on. But Then he called his servants that ministered unto him, remember they were gone, and said, put now this woman out from me, and bolt, that's the first time that word shows up, and the last time, the only time the word bolt in the Bible, the door after her. Get her out of this room, get her out of my house, and lock that door that she don't come back in. I thought you loved it. And how many women out there who have had a young pregnancy without marriage and has the, the man bolt that door on her way out? Because of lust. And I'm not saying Tamar is like, it's, Tamar was raped, but there are women who are not raped. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her, like Joseph. Diverse means different colors, separate colors. She had a colorful garment. For with such robes, that's the first time that word shows up, were the king's daughters that were virgins. So all the virgin daughters of David's family, they had these bright, different color robes. That would say that woman is pure. Look at her. That's David's daughter. That's David's granddaughter. That's David's great-granddaughter. Look, at, She's still a virgin. Look at that color. What about that daughter over there? The one that's married to such and such. Well, see the garment? It's not as good as that one. She's no longer a virgin. Uh, and the, uh, that word of virgins, apparel, apparel. That's the first time that word shows up. And the only other place that word shows up is in Luke 7, 25. Then his servant 
brought out brought her out and bolted that's the only time that bolted show, word shows up the door after her so the only two bolts in the bible is locking that door it's a bolt dead bolt it's still called that today out of the bible where do you get the dead bolt it's out of the bible and tamar put ashes on her head she, she's in mourning we're from ashes we're from dusk I don't know where she got them from, but she put it on her head. And rent her garment of diverse colors that was on her. What's that mean? I am no longer a virgin. I can't wear this no more. So anybody would come in and say, what's wrong with Tamar? And laid her hand on her head and went across. It's almost like she's sitting, she's just sitting there like, She's been shamed. She's been harmed because of lust. Sin does affect other people. And after her brother said unto her, Has Amen thy brother been with thee? Common knowledge. David all knew it. So Absalom looks in, looks at her garment, it's ripped, it says, Amen did it, didn't he? Everybody knew but David what Alman had about his sister. It was common knowledge. I guarantee he talked about her at the water cooler or whatever they had back then. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. Kind of hard. Absalom. She was just raped. That's bad advice. That's like, uh, uh, oh. Hannah's husband. She ain't got no children. The other wife's picking on her. Am I not better than ten? No, not now. Don't say it. Keep your mouth. Sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut. You just made it worse. You know, some men, they try to comfort their women. It don't come out right. We think it's right. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Absalom locked her up in his house. I don't know if he's fearing maybe she's got pregnant. She's going to get pregnant. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very raw, period. And Absalom spake on his what, what? How come David didn't do nothing? What did he do to Bathsheba? How could David speak about Amon when he did what Amon did to Bathsheba? And remember, there's a there could be, could be a letter out there in David's handwriting about Uriah. David's in a pickle now. David ought to correct his children, but oh man. David would be a hypocrite. He still should have punished no matter what he'd done. But all he does is get angry. That's going to build worse tensions in this family now. Be careful what you're saying because someone else may do the sin. And you may have to just get angry and can't do nothing about it because you've done it. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that thou shalt also reap. Just bear, that's a rule of life, and you just better stop sowing wild seeds. You better get out of your sins. You better do right. Don't cry, baby, later. Because all David can do is now is get angry. There's no action. No protection. Tamar is left locked up in Absalom's house, and David doesn't do nothing about it. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amon, neither good nor bad. Absalom hated Amon because he had forced his sister Tamar. That hatred is going to grow into bitterness. And if you want to see a picture of bitterness, now you start reading about bitterness. Bitterness starts off with the seed. And it grows roots. And it's like Cain. I mean the plant, Cain. It's like bamboo. 
You can rip that man groove out of the ground, but it's coming back up. I have poured gasoline on bamboo, and it still comes back up. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep herders and Baal Hazor. Absalom's a shepherd, a sheep owner, like Jesus Christ. Antichrist type. Jesus has sheep, the Antichrist has sheep. Knows that Baal. That's 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 the sun god. That's the chief deity of Cana, which is besides Ephraim. And Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king, David himself, and said, Behold now, thy servants have sheep masters. Let the king and I and let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with Isaac. Come on, let's go have one big brawl. Let's get together. Let's have unity. Let's get all the religions together. Let's get everybody together. Let's have unification. And the king said in Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not let us not all now go. Least we be chargeable. That's the first time that word shows up on today. And what David's saying, listen, if you th we're gonna have to throw you apart. Next sheep shearing gathering. I don't really want to do that. I got trouble in the family right now, Absalom. I got trouble between you and Amon. I got trouble between you, Tamar, and Amon. Right now, I don't want to be with you guys. And then I got to throw you something. And notice how we go back to what Dave, David was a shepherd. And Absalom brings up the very thing that David used to do as a young child. Bring his sheep to be sheared. Oh, the memories are praying back for David. I bet you right now he is. A, oh, I wish I'd just go be back in Bethlehem taking care of the sheep. I wish that thing with, with uh, Goliath never happened. Oh, the mess I am in now. Now you bring up my memory, Absalom, about being that young man in sheep care. I remember those days. Later on, David's going to say, oh, if I could just have the water of that, of that well right by the gate of Bethlehem. Oh, that was such good water. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amon go with us. And the king said, oh, Why should he go with thee? You hate him. I know you hate him. Why are you asking for him to go? But Absalom pressed him that he let Amon and all the king's sons go with him. David, what are you doing? Now you unwillingly put Tamar into the bed of, of Ammon, but you are now putting your sons in jeopardy. And those Absalom had to get the king's permission. King's still in charge of his family. He's the king. And everything that his family does, he's the king. And you do not bring a bad name upon the king's name. England needs to learn that. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark, that's an interesting word with Absalom, a type of Antichrist, Mark. <laughs> What's the Antichrist do? He comes up with a Mark. He now, when Ab Ammon's heart is, is merry with wine, we're going to get him drunk. That's exactly what Jezebel did with the people with, with uh, Naboth. Let's get everybody happy. Let's get them drinking wine. Your greatest fall, your greatest destruction, if you put your lips to that alcohol. Habakkuk says, Woe be to a man that gives another person, uh, I'm not quoting the verse verbatim, gives them wine so they can uncover their nakedness. And when I say unto you, Smite Ammon, then kill him. Fear not. Have I not commanded you be courageous and valiant? Absalom, why can't you do it yourself? Now, Absalom's being that avenger is not of blood. He has vengeance. He has bitterness. 
He just can't do it himself. Yeah, but what have we learned through the Bible tactics? What have we learned about people who think about things and not do them, have somebody else do them? He's charged also. So having somebody else do your dirty deeds, you're still guilty. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had com uh, commanded. So is Amnon dead now? Is he dead? He's dead. Sheep number two of four. This is number two of four. The baby died. Ammon died. David said. We'll follow these up as we go through. David said he shall restore the land fourfold. The baby and now Ammon. That's two sheep that are dead. God took the first one. A brother, a brother took the brother's life. The second one. That does not sound like. Genesis 3 and 4, where a brother took a brother's life. Kind of interesting with the Bible. It plays out. Satan only has three tools in his toolbox, and they work great. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are three great tools, and they never break, and they always work. Now, all three may not work on one person. Two of them may not work on one person. Only one may be. Maybe two on one. Maybe all three on one. Maybe what the tool God uses, I mean, Satan uses on me will not work for you. And the, the tool that Satan uses for you may not work for me. I have no problems with beer. I do not like it. I do not like smelling it. I don't even like looking at it. But there are other toolbox of the three tools that Satan has. So number two of four has died. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose. And every man got him upon his own meal. That's the first time that word shows up. And fled. That's a funny place for a mule. Aren't they stubborn? I'm told. But there's a few. First mule. And that's what kings' horses, uh, kings rode upon in the Old Testament, mules. That was like the Cadillac of cars today. That would the mule would be. I, I don't know what the brand is, but President Trump's or the president's limousine. I don't know who makes it. That would be the mule of the of the household of the king of Israel. Now you would think it'd be a horse. Jesus Christ comes back on a white horse. And they fled. Then they got up from the dinner table and they took off, leaving their brother dead. And it came to pass while they were in the, the way that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom has slain all the king's sons. You see how Baptist rumors get along? You see what's wrong with rumors? By the time it gets to the ears of David, all the sons are dead. No, only one of them is. And there is not one left. There is not one of them left. That's kind of wrong. Only one is dead. The others took off. Then the king arose. And tear his garments. Like Tamar. Like Tamar. Tear his garments. And lay on the earth. That's what he did with the baby. For what we probably saw for seven days. And all his servants stood by with him. Their clothes rent. Boy, things are, they're all on the ground now. With David. They weren't on the ground when that baby's dying. They're all in the back room. Uh, uh, come on, David, get up. Let's eat. No, I ain't. No, no. Talking to the Lord. I'm getting down with the Lord. The baby dies. How do we tell him? I don't know how we tell him. Is the baby dead? He's dead. Now he's down the ground. They're all down the ground with him. And 32. Then Jonadab. Let's go back to verse 
5. But Haman had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother. Verse 32. And Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother. That's the guy who started all this. Here he is now in the presence of David. Answered and said, let not my Lord suppose, that's the first time that word shows up, <laughs> that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons. Jonathan, shut up. You caused this trouble. You ever wonder if Bathsheba knew about that letter? You ever wonder if David knew what Jonadab did? How's that for reaping and sowing? I don't think David would be living if Bathsheba ever found out what happened. I don't, I'm, I'm just assuming. And then Galatians 6 10, be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. I think Bathsheba, I think, I think, I don't know, I think Bathsheba was left in the dark. Now David's being left in the, in the dark about the man that's talking to him right now. Because this is the man that started it all. If it wasn't for this man, Amen would just keep on having his sexual fantasy and maybe he'd never carried it out. I don't know. But here's a man that started it. Had the serpent never shown up to Eve, as Jonadab, who subtil, it says Genesis 3 and 2 Samuel 13. I don't know. The son of Shimon, David's brother, answered and said, Let not let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men the king said so they're all young for amen only is dead for by the appointment of absalom absalom set appointment look at that that day that absalom came to the king he said let's have this sheep shearing on that day absalom had already put forward to his men we're going to kill amen do you know that the Antichrist has a appointment set to do everything he has to be set by seven? Seven years, seven vials, seven trumpets, seven seals, three woes, the four horses, horsemen. That Antichrist by God has an appointment in those seven years of Jacob's trouble. One of them great appointments is three and a half years. The abomination lives desolate. Absalom had an appointment to kill a Jew. Amen. The Antichrist has an appointment to kill Jew. Hell, oh, may I help you? Yes, I need to set an appointment for my doctor and such and such. Hey, on Wednesday at 2 p.m., can you come see the doctor? Yes, I can. Thank you. The appointment set. Absalom. For on the sheep shearing day, he is dying. Now that has something to do with the Antichrist. When they shear the sheep, I don't know what it is. But something when the time when they shear those sheep is also the time that the Antichrist is going to kill the Jews. That would be amazing if it was three and a half years. It's something to look at. Of Absalom that he has been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. So that moment he sees Tamar in the hallway wherever she is. She's got her clothes red. She's got ashes on her head. She's got her clothes have been rent. I'm going to kill that boy. That boy is dead. Come here, Tamar. Come home with me. Oh, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. And I bet she's also protecting her from his anger. Boy, this seed of bitterness. But do you really blame, I mean, all set aside, do you blame Absalom for what he did? Should not a David stepped in and passed judgment? The law says if a man kills a man unwittingly, accidentally, I know this is not accidental, but he's a flee to the city of refuge. And if he's found outside the city of refuge, an avenger of blood comes and kills him. The Bible says, well, he should have been in that city. You were protected. You stepped out of the protection. Because David did not do anything. Absalom seed of rage. And again. 
sheep number two has died. What were they doing at this feast? Weren't they having sheep? Weren't they dealing with the, with the wool of the sheep? Was it a point in time? It's once appointed unto man to die, but after this, the judgment. Every word, don't change the words, don't correct the words in the Bible. You ruin the meanings. Now therefore, let my let not my Lord the King take the thing to his heart. Uh, one of your sons is dead. At least one of them is dead now. Poor advice. To think that all the king's sons are dead. For Amon only is dead. But Absalom fled. And the Antichrist is going to flee. Jerusalem. He's going to come to Jerusalem. He's going to hear of a war of a battle. He's going to go to take care of that battle. He's going to come back. Like Saul and David. But the only thing, Absalom, I mean, the Antichrist is going to come after Israel. Saul never did get David. And the young men that kept the watch lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, there came much people by the way of the hillside behind him. So they're in the city of Jerusalem. There are watches all around. And they look out at the thing, and they're looking for people coming. And they say, well, are those people enemies? Are they foes? Are they friends? Are they travelers? Are they nomads? Do they bring spices? What, what are, who are those people out there? And they're looking out there and they see a bunch of people running and say, who are those people? Oh, those are the king's sons. David! David! I see your sons coming. Except for two of them. But I see your sons. Here they come. Right behind that hill. See, you know the hill over there? Here they come. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come. As thy servant said, so it is. Oh, shut up, Jonah, Dad. Can you imagine what David would have done to him if he found out? David killed a man because I slayed King Saul. Here's his crown. Put him to death. David, you have an enemy. We chopped off his head in bed. Put him to death. David, I told your son to do that. <laughs> Don't put him. I'm, let me at him. Let me at him. I'll take care of him myself. And it came to pass as soon as he had made an end of speaking that behold the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept. Now these sons are running from who? Absalom. A type of Antichrist. They are coming to who? David. A type of Jesus Christ. When those Jews see Jesus coming on that horseback for them, probably sell the preacher. Oh, look what's going to happen. The king's sons came, lift up their voices and wept. And the king also, and all the servants wept very sore. That's what's going to happen when the Jews see Jesus. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai. Talmai. The son of Menhida, king of Gershom. And David mourned for his son every day. Now David in his years of wanderings and made savage raids upon Gezer and evidently bore away Maka, the daughter of the king of Gezer, of who was born Absalom. So this is where Absalom's mother had come from, Gezer. So he runs like Tamar, the servant of, of uh, Sarah, she starts heading her way back to Egypt. She's been cast out. So she's going back where she knows his home. So does uh, Absalom. So Absalom fled and went to Geshurim and was there three years. <laughs> three years. And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom. Now, Jesus is not going to long for the, for the Antichrist. It looks like David loved Absalom above all his sons. Long to go forth from the Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Haman, seeing he, he was dead. He longed to go forward unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Haman, seeing he was dead. Who is the he, I wonder? Because there's David and Absalom in the same verse. Now the last person spoken would be Absalom. Amen was dead, so they were comforted because Amen was dead. 
did that to Neymar, and now he's dead. Yeah, so it would be... Vengeance has been... It would probably assume that Absalom, okay, he's dead. I'm satisfied. Now I just got to get my dad not mad at me no more. David's in a pickle. Now everybody's mad at David. <laughs> Be not deceived, God is not marked. What sower man soweth, that he shall also reap. Troubling times. We still got two more lambs left that need to die. 